When we were both kids, my friend's brothers introduced her to Magic the Gathering, which she in turn introduced to our own little friend group. This began an obsession that saw us regularly visiting the likes of Woolies to snag boosters and experience the thrill of not knowing what you'd pull from a packet. I'm going to say with near certainty that we didn't play the game right, but we loved to collect the cards and play our own Bastardist version all the same. One of my fondest memories from this time is when we discovered a comic book shop that sold second-hand magic cards. The owner had just bought someone's collection of cards and had them all in cardboard boxes. He let us sit there for hours on end, going through each box and meticulously picking out all the cards we wanted. We weren't really clued up on what was good, we just knew what we liked and chose based on that. That owner probably found us funny, maybe even pitted us, but it didn't matter to us as we were happy. The same cards from those days are still kept somewhere in my storage today. I hadn't thought about that memory in a long while, but as soon as I started playing Cardboard Kings, Card Shop Simulator, it all came back to me in a rush of nostalgia. I can practically smell that box of old cards just thinking about it. This game has you running your dad's old warlock trading card store with the aim to become profitable, all while giving your busted up store a much needed makeover and solving the mystery of the legendary cards. It's a cute little fun resource management game that I knew at first glance that I would enjoy, but I underestimated just how much I would fall in love with it. I didn't realize how many layers there would be, the many little details and features that trading card enthusiasts can't help but relate to, and the quirky retro style with its hipster character art that makes it thoroughly charming. You can purchase cards on Bay from a range of sellers, with the condition and prices varying, which then get posted out to your store in multiple packets with your address scrawled in different handwriting. Avid eBayers, you know the feeling. You can also purchase booster packs and tear those bad boys open to try your luck at scoring rare cards. Though it's a shame you can't make your own bay listings to try and sell some of your cards at a higher rate. Becoming a successful card store isn't as simple as it looks as everything fluctuates, prices, trends, demand it all affects your business. If there's news that a champion just won a tournament with a certain kind of card, you better believe prices for that card are going up. Did a card just become banned? That price is going down. And there are all sorts of hilarious things that affect price, such as the church condemning certain cards for satanic implications. You have to keep an eye on the news and your calendar to know when to buy and when to sell to make the best profit possible. It's not just about buying low and selling high. You have a store to run and that comes with all sorts of customer queries. People will come in and ask you to value their cards, purchase cards, trade cards, or generally ask to borrow your superior warlock knowledge. Customers will call with specific requests, and whether it's a phone call or a walk-in customer, the great thing is, it's up to you whether you want to be a decent person or absolutely swindle them. This affects your reputation, which in turn affects how many customers visit or the chance of a rush hour, so choose wisely whether you want to be known as a jerk. The more you play, the more features you unlock too. As new card sets get released, you'll throw launch parties, you can plan booster drafts where you and your mates split the cost of a box of boosters and then share the wealth. With booster drafts, you get to feel the packets to get a hint of what's inside. Don't lie, we've all done this we all know foil cards way more. You can also host tournaments which can affect your reputation and market prices, as well as giving you an opportunity to make some quick cash if you bet right. Clearance sales are another option if you want to clear your inventory quick, improve your reputation, and you're not too fussed about turning a profit. You can buy new decorations to make your little store shine, or even earn them from Declan by completing specific goals. Completing shop goals, such as buying a certain number of cards or making a specific amount of cash from one sale, will also get you tags these are special little stickers you can pop on your cards to help affect sales, price, and reputation. Once again, you need to use your business brain and work out the right balance of making a profit and serving the customer's needs. 
There's a lot of quirky humor to love in Cardboard Kings, the gameplay is all too easy to enjoy, and more importantly, it feeds my addictive personality of needing to collect everything in a game. As someone who has gone down the rabbit hole of trading cards, there are so many things you can relate to, and I love seeing the different sets and artwork. As I rip off virtual kids with my battered cards in Harry's card store, I'd like to think I would make the comic book store owner from my childhood proud.